we are now at that stage that we make compensation breaking decisions. Those decisions that stand out and give you outstanding result. With these strategies and decisions, no doubt you will emerge the best in the crowd. We know you're gonna say you're lucky you found this video. It's that time that we venture into a no loss making business. Hello guys, hope you are doing all right, ready to learn something new and eager to get everything right. If you have not watched part one of this video, kindly consider doing so as not to be left out in a whole game of being the best. Now, let us start. TQM. We are making TQM decision first because TQM influences the outcome in other department. Apparently, its impact on research and development is visible even when making decisions. Making TQM decision is very simple. Don't spend more than $2,000 on a given strategy per round and don't go beyond $4,000 in the entire game. So, we are starting low as we expand. Now, we'll spend a maximum of $1,000 per strategy. TQM reduces research and development cycle time, admin costs and material costs, as well as increased demand. The next item is research and development, a backbone of high compensation point. If you do well here, you are most likely to get the best. So where do we start? Let us start with a product in the nano market segment. That is product attic. For the attic, the worthy competitor product base at round zero, head performance of 12.0, size of 6.0, and reliability of 23,000. For the best, the most they can get in round 1 is a performance of 12.8, size of 5.3, and reliability of 23,000. To stand out, we opted for the performance of 13.1, size of 5.0, and reliability of 24,000. We estimated to have renewed attic on the market by October 14th. Do you think we have met customer buying criteria for this product? For Nano, the ideal position comes first with 35% importance, edge of 1.0 second with 20% importance, and liability of maximum 24,000 for 18% importance. It seems we are already the best since we have outshined our competitors. Our next segment is Elite. Here, our main product is X. Baldwin company product, BAM, is our main competitor in terms of ideal position and liability. BAM has a performance of 14.0, sales of 8.0, and liability of 25,000. The best BAM can have in round 1 is performance of 14.0, sales of 7.0, and liability of 25,000. To have a better product than BAMs, we decided to assign X the performance of 15.2, sales of 7.0, and liability of 26,000. Wondering if we are within customer bank criteria recommendation, of course we are. The only issue is our age which is at 0 0.9 and little off compared to recommended 0, 0.0. However, even our computer are having the same issue and there's nothing we can do about it unless we replace the product with a new one. So why is this important? Age of 0, 0.0 is 34% important. Price is second at 24% importance. Ideal position third at 22% importance. And finally, reliability at 20% importance. Although we are not adequately guaranteed a share of 34% of the age of 0.0, we are secured on ideal position and reliability, hence we are going to sell enough units. For Drift, we had product able. For Drift research and development, we only need to be moderate and ensure we are within Drift market segment perception map. That's why we provided it with performance of 7.4, size of 12.6, and reliability of 20,000. We expected it to be ready on the market by August 27th. For Drift, Reliability of 20,000 is the second most important consideration for customer with 20% scope. Ideal position and age account for 35% importance. It seems we are already meeting all customers' needs, so selling adequate units to make a profit will not be an issue in this segment. For the core, we have Sensor 8. This is an average product and customer are less concerned with perfect ideal position or, or reliability. In short, they are in for average product at a fair price. That's why the price is 46% important. Therefore, whatever decisions one makes, the price relative to competitors should be considered. Ideal age comes second with 20% importance, reliability comes third with 18% importance, and finally, ideal position at 16%. Basically, any product with good price and is within core market segment boundaries is a worthy competitor. Although factors such as reliability and ideal position comes last, respectively, they are source of competitive advantage and will utilize them fully as a broad conservative differentiator will do. Based on that, our best competitor with regard to being unique is likely to be Chester Company with hard to co products, i.e. Kiwa and Cut. The best one in uniqueness is Cut with performance of 11.1, size of 9.7, and reliability of 20,000. 
the best they can have in round one is 12.1 in performance and size of 9.0 with same reliability. For it, without providing it with a performance of 10.2, size of 9.8 and reliability of 22,000 will make us a worthy competitor since there's no way we could outshine cut in a deal position. So the best to differentiate was to go for reliability. We also introduced three products, that is Alan, Alex and LW. For Alex, we focused it on the elite market segment. We expected it to be on the market by August 1st, 20. We provided it with a performance of 16.4, size of 6 and reliability of 26,000. In short, we went for the best one could ever get in the market segment. We know that with this decision, no product will match the uniqueness of Alex comes August 1st. For Nano, we had product Alan. We also strive for a unique product in this case. And that's why we provided Alan with a performance of 14.0, size of 3.6 and reliability of 24,000. With this decision, we expected Alan to be on the market by July 20. We also introduced a crossover product, LW, mainly focused on selling between core, nano, and elite segments. We provided it with a performance of 12.0, size of 8.0, and reliability of 22,000. We expected it to be on the market by May. How much will you sell with this complex decision? Is there an additional benefit that being unique brings? And how can that be converted into units that can be sold? Also, how much will we charge for each product? Is there a limit on marketing spend? These are some of the many important questions that marketing and production decision making seeks to answer. So stay tuned in as we make this decision together so that you don't go overboard and risk excess stock and eventually emergency loan. For X, an elite product, we charge $42 per unit and spend 2000 on promotion and 2500 on sales. We estimated to sell 962 units. For Apple, a drift segment product, we charge $20.50 per unit, spend $2,000 on promotion and $2,500 on sales, and estimated to sell 1,706 units. For eight, a product in the core segment, we charge $30 per unit, spend $2,000 on promotion and $2,500 on sales, and estimated to sell 1,904 units. Unit to be sold is calculated by taking last year units sold, add, grow the units, and guess what, you expect to sell more than competitors. The question now is how much is the perfect unit to produce per product. For Arctic, a nano product, we ordered 990 units, although we projected to sell 1,192 units. The reason for less production than forecast is that we had an inventory of 264 units that covered the deficit. For X, an elite product, we ordered 850 units since we had an inventory of 216 units. For Apple, a drift segment product, we ordered 1,130 units since we had a large inventory of 758 units. Finally, for Core, it had an inventory of 47 units. Therefore, we ordered 2,000 units. Do you have to make changes to the plant capacity and automation? Yes. For Arctic, our second shift production is at 36%. We ordered an additional 50 capacity and increased automation to 4.5. This decision will allow us to order additional 100 units next year and lower labor costs. For X, we only increased automation to 4.5 but did not order additional capacity since second shift production is less than 20%. For Apple, we can produce 2,260 units, but now we are still selling less than 2,000 units. However, there's a chance we'll exceed 2,260 next year. Therefore, we ordered an additional capacity of 100 units. In a drift segment, product prices are essential. It will always to have the highest automation possible quickly to cut down labor costs. That's why we increase automation to 9.0. For it, second shift production is at 66%. Therefore, we ordered 150 units capacity to reduce second shift production from next year. We also increased automation to 7.0 to lower labor costs. We also ordered capacities and automation for our new products. For Alex, Alan, and LW, we ordered 300 units capacity with 4.0 automation. This decision is based on the fact that newer products do not sell so much in year one of introduction since they are fresh and most customers never heard of them before. Besides, we are also limited on finances. We also don't want to take too many loans to finance capacity development. So, what impact does our decision have on finance? With this decision, we are likely to make a 9.9 .9 million profit. However, we might end up with an emergency loan worth 10 million by the end of the year. If we issue a bond worth 
14 million 722,000. We'll have a positive cash flow of 2.98 million. So is our decision good for critical financial ratios? Let us check. Leverage we are having 4.0 out of 6, which is not bad. Raise of working capital, we have 4 out of 4, which is good. Our employee productivity is low and turnover rates are very high. That's why we have 0 points out of 6 in both cases. To control this problem, we increase recruitment spend to 5,000 and allocated 8 hours of training. To cover the additional cost, we issue stock worth 3,000 and 8,000 worth of short term debt. Based on these changes, our leverage has decreased to 3.2 out of 7, which is not also bad. Thank you all for taking your time to learn something new. I can assure you, it is not in vain. If our content suits you and you really feel like supporting our channel, kindly subscribe and ring that bell never to miss out on our excellent content on a wide range of topics. If you have any question, kindly comment below or email us. I'll surely get to you ASAP. Again, thank you and have an excellent time.